Wing Chun is a very kind girl, she works in a shop that sells tofu. She is able to make any guest laugh and sparkles with honesty. Her father has taught her Kung Fu since she was a little girl. Her sister Ying Chun is the exact opposite of the girl. Gu Yin makes furniture for the shop. So they work side by side under the same roof. Bao Cho returns home and tells his uncle and aunt about his journey. He is asked to visit Uncle Emo on his next trip and take Wing Chun as his wife. He has never seen the girl, but agrees to meet her. When Bao Cho arrives in town, he sees the girl masterfully arrest the thief. Bao's friend says this girl is any husband's nightmare. Bao Cho goes to his uncle's house and finds out that this girl is Wing Chun. He and his friend sit down in shock and try to comprehend the coincidence. The father tells the girl to change her clothes and come out looking her best. She comes out dressed up and discovers that the boy has run away, but Wing Chun runs after him and is not upset. At night, the girl approaches her father and apologizes, saying that she doesn't want to get married, but only to protect her father all her life. The father says that Bao Cho is her future husband, they decided so with her mother even before the woman died. The man, as usual, lost his gamble and started attacking the woman in the middle of the street, but Wing Chun stood up for the lady in the hat. She told the woman where the pharmacy was, and at the same time, she met her future mentor, who would soon change her life. Bao Cho goes to her uncle and aunt and tells them all about the girl, trying to get rid of the impending engagement. The guardians respond by picking a fight with their son and convincing him to go there again, but with them. Ying Chun begins to teach Wing Chun how to be a girl and even shares her clothes. The next day people come in shock at the sight of Wing Chun. She became very feminine and charming. One young man from a rich family is not seriously interested in the girl and makes all sorts of advances to her. She gets tired of it and makes a bet with him, if she loses, she will become his wife along with her sister. The girl almost loses, but the woman in the hat suddenly appears in the crowd and helps the girl by spilling a basket of nuts on which the rich young man slips and loses the duel. Wing Chun's father says their next fight will be in three months and they leave. At night, a woman in a hat knocks on their door, father thanks the abbess for helping them fight. She recognizes the girl as a kung fu technician from Shaolin and hurries to tell them that the temple where it all originated, was burned down. Only five survived she is one of them. She has to disguise herself in order to survive. At the apothecary, however, she went to a man who took her to a secret door that leads to the caves. They hide a secret passage into the mountains where the old temple is located. Wing's father was about to go to avenge his enemies, but the woman quickly stopped him not now. She was attracted to Wing Chun, so she seriously decided to train the girl. The woman teaches her new techniques at any time of the day, they practice in an old temple, away from the hustle and bustle of the world. The teacher gives her wise instructions, while the girl grows stronger with each training, both in mind and body. She can't wait to show everyone her new techniques. She trains with her father, who appeared to succumb to her, but she still catches him off guard and hits him in the stomach. After her evening workout, she cooks a meal for her teacher. The woman is proud of her student, she thinks she is feminine and thrifty, but she doesn't think so because her father constantly scolds her for her boyish behavior. Suddenly Wing Chun decides to ask the teacher about her parents, but the teacher is lost by this question and tells the girl a story about her daughter. She died just after being born, but if she had lived, she would have been the same age as Wing Chun. The girl supports her teacher, she is already her parent now that she has taken up training. The teacher convinces her that she needs a man, but not Bao Cho. A rich guy returns to town to fight Wing Chun again. He is confident of his victory, but the girl is in no way afraid of him. If he loses, he will have to work three months in a cafe. Wing Chun takes the paint and draws a red circle around the two of them. They will have three attempts to attack, the one outside the circle loses. The guy cheats, but the teacher tells him all the secrets of fighting him, and the girl wins but he has no intention of giving up and attacks the girl again. He ended up losing his teeth, but that doesn't stop him, so she kicks him inside the circle. Wing Chun defeats him once more. In the evening, they all gather around the table with the teacher as a family. The father thanks the teacher for training with his daughter, and she in turn asks him to keep quiet about her presence, as the five monks in Shaolin are still being searched for. A man is ordered to catch the five Shaolin men, or else he will be in trouble. He takes up the cause. The monks hide from the assassins, but they are more cunning and hunt the men down. One is left alive to be tracked. It turns out that one of the monks is hiding in Liang Shan. Could it be that someone has betrayed Wing Chun's teacher? Bao Cho arrives in town with her uncle and aunt, this time everything goes smoothly. The girl's father warmly welcomes the guests, and the girl hands out tofu dessert. The father gives Bao's family a tour, and Wing Chun has to spend time with her fiancé. They have a conflict. The girl thinks he is a mama's boy and he thinks she is a bad girl. 
When the argument turns into a fight, the parents come and calm the children down. But at the same time, they get into a fight themselves. The parents arrange everything so that the children apologize to each other as soon as possible, but the men get too carried away and everything spills over into a real fight. Fortunately, they manage to calm them down. In the evening, everyone gathers for a meal. The adults leave and the young men stay behind to chat, but the toga gets so drunk on wine that they start fooling around. The girl makes all sorts of jokes about the groom, until things turn into a fight again. They start a fight, but both are so drunk they can barely move around on the spot. The fat guy spits on the other guy, and Bao Cho and Wing Chun start tearing down everything in the house. They are both too stubborn to stop and fall asleep. Bao Cho takes the girl's hand, trying to get to know the girl better, because Fatty said that if a girl has a soft palm, then she's a girl of the first order. Wing Chun half asleep asks why he took her hand and Bao reads her a romantic poem. She smiles and drifts off to sleep. Fatty wakes up in the middle of everything and sees Ying Chun sleeping next to her friend and Wing Chun sleeping with Bao. A smile appears on his face, he is glad there is so much love around and falls asleep himself. Wing Chun goes to the sleeping room and Bao sleeps near the entrance. When they come to, the girl starts screaming because she's naked and the guy can't understand how he ended up on her bedroom doorstep. Ying Chun reassures her sister by saying that she undressed her and the guy only carried her to bed. Wing Chun smiles and finally realizes, Bao Cho is not a mama's boy, he's just well-mannered. Bao stays with Wing and her father while his uncle and aunt go home. The teacher notices that the girl is hovering in the clouds at practice and explains the poem Bao read to her. The girl comes to be embarrassed and delighted at the same time. The teacher says it will rain, but how does she know that? The woman talks about how she lived in nature, and at the same time she remembers her love Kam Yin. He was from a poor family, and also in a warring clan. They were expelled and the girl became pregnant. Kam Yin was taken with her and she was left alone. The girl cut her hair and went to a monastery to escape her past. She has lost all attachment to the material world, the girl can forget everything except Kung Fu. The teacher tells her that Bao's decency can only be learned with time, and the girl agrees. A rich young man tells the men about Father Wing's shop, and they decide to go there. Meanwhile, the teacher has given the girl medicinal herbs that cause diarrhea if drunk in large quantities. Wing Chun gives them to the cafe and Bao is asked to add them to every meal. Gu Yin is unaware of the side effect and asks to add more. The dish is brought out to the guests, but no one has time to touch it. The rich guy takes the food and despite resistance, continues to act nasty and picks a fight with Grumpy. Bao has no problem throwing the rich guy's men around, and soon he himself. His punches are very nimble and strong. Everyone leaves because of an upset stomach, and Wing Chun doesn't have time to catch anyone. She changes into her uniform and goes to the rich guy's house of entertainment. A disguised Wing Chun picks a fight with the scoundrel, and soon he starts asking for help, until a second man comes out to her and starts a fight with her. She manages to fight back, but he is stronger, and the girl almost falls down from the second floor. She is surrounded by guards and would probably be dead if it weren't for Bao coming to her aid. She becomes hysterical and Wing asks Bao Cho something but he quickly calms her down, she is his wife and he is responsible for everything. The girl gives him her hand and reminds him out loud of a love poem. Wing Chun's teacher, Wu Mei, recognizes the rich guy and tells his lord about it. Soon people come to town and try to arrest Bao Cho. The lord asks for tofu pudding and tells Wu Mei in parallel. He asks to be told about the nun when she appears. Of course this man turns out to be her long-time lover Kam Yin. Wing's Chun father gathers everyone around the evening table and tells them that Kam Yin is very powerful and if he doesn't find the girl, it won't be limited to her, they could start trouble. They make a plan to unleash Wing Chun's teacher. The girl asks her father to trust her, and Bao Cho only confirms her words and promises to watch over the girl. Two friends of the family go as bait to get Wing and Bao through. They are caught and killed on the spot while the pair escape safely. Gu Yin never got Wing's love. Wing Chun finds out that Wu Mei has left. Kam Yin tracks her down and convinces her to work for the emperor. After a moment, he has an epiphany and promises the woman he will give up everything for her, but provokes Wu Mei into a fight. The girl skillfully fights the scoundrel, but he is stronger and blood gushes out of her mouth. Despite this, she continues to stand her ground until Wing Chun shows up and distracts him. Bao Cho takes teacher Wing down one path and leaves on her own by another path. He and Kam Yin come face to face and start a fight. He is, as always, very strong and the girl barely repels his blows. They come to a place dotted with poles and start a fight that causes the poles to start falling and sand to fall from the ceiling right on their heads. Wing Chun remembers everything Wu Mei taught her and skillfully beats the man until they both fall into the sand cave, where their fight continues, but with more force. Wu Mei asks Bao Cho to follow her lover, 
as Cam Ying knows no compassion. He goes to the girl and Cam Yin stabs him with a spear. The boy closes his eyes and this angers the girl terribly. She does not leave a wet spot from Cam Yin until they are both behind a mountain wall at a great height. The girl tries in every way to send him down, but he resists. He almost throws the girl off the mountain, but she turns around and kicks him, then finishes him off with her hand so that Cam Yin's mouth bleeds, but he wakes up at the last second and throws the girl off the mountain. She almost falls over until Bao Cho holds out his hand to her. He pretended to be dead on purpose so that the girl would get angry and win the fight. Together with Wu Mei, they walk out of the cemetery and say goodbye. The girl asks about the name of the punch the woman taught her. Since they are almost related, she calls it Wing Chun. Years later, the aging Wing Chun and Bao Cho go to lunch at a cafe, but young children steal food and are scolded by the workers, but Wing's grandmother intercedes and pays for the food the children stole. A child asks about her admission. She answers that it is Wing Chun's fist. 